All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, today, I wanted to show you uh, something that happened yesterday. Uh, it was a nice sunny day, and so uh, my battery had actually charged up all the way to 100%, and that's the first time it's done that in a while. What I noticed is once it got into absorption mode, things went awry. Here, let me show you. As you can see on this screen right here, this black line shows my midpoint voltage deviation. Uh, if you don't remember what that is, it's a pretty much the difference between the voltages of my two batteries. Uh, my two batteries are right here. One is in blue and one is in orange. And as you can see, as soon as it goes into absorption, one of the battery voltages keeps going up and the other one starts going down. So there is something definitely wrong with the balance of my batteries. And then it goes all the way and it goes for two hours. My absorption time is set for two hours. So what happens is at two hours, you can see right here, one of my batteries is at 14.34 volts and the other battery is at 13.45. Uh, and that is not good. That is way out of balance. Uh, so I somehow need to top balance. Uh, so what I would have to do is disconnect those batteries and put them into parallel. Let the voltages uh, equalize. And then charge it up to 100% to get it all saturated. But I don't have a charger. All I have is my solar stuff. So, what I did is I bought a Victron, I bought a Victron battery balancer. Um, it had good reviews, but I did notice in some of the comments that, uh, well, one person in particular says that it will not work with lithium batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries. Then as I scroll down, there was another comment that said it's great for lithium batteries. So I went ahead and I bought it. I trust the Victron name. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hook it up to my system. I'm gonna let it run for seven days. And then uh, we'll see what my results are uh, after a week. But, uh, for right now, let's go ahead and uh, open this up and see what we got. All right, so here's how it was shipped to me. It was in a uh, in an Amazon box, but or an Amazon bag. Pretty much shows that it's a battery balancer. Some information on the back about the problem and the solution about battery balancing. So it's all basic basic stuff it uh, shows the technical data all this stuff you can find on the website but this is how it looks when it's shipped so let's go ahead and open it up And that's all that's in there is just the balancer as you can see it's not really that that big it's pretty small and uh, it looks like it comes with some documentation shows how to hook it up I only have two batteries so that's it right there but it's all it's all the basic information the same stuff that's on the on the box yeah it just it basically just shows the installation 
uh, and what happens if there's alarms, uh, and then the technical data for the for the balancer. But that's it, just documentation and the balancer. It doesn't come with any wiring. Um, it feels pretty, pretty well made. Uh, has a pretty good size heat sink right here. Um, it is, it is plastic. It looks like it has uh, four, four screw holes. So I can go ahead and just screw it right onto my board. It does work by uh, dissipating heat, like it, it, it generates heat from the from the battery that has the, the higher voltage. So that is something I'll have to keep in mind when I install it. That's all there is. It's 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 just the battery balancer. There's no it, it doesn't give you any kind of wires. You have to create all your own wires. Um, it does say that it does I think 700 milliamps. And it, uh, it does recommend, uh, I think, 18 gauge wire is what you should use to connect to your battery. So yeah, that's it. So we'll go ahead and uh, connect this up to my system. On this battery balancer, there is a 24 volt a common and a zero volt and these connections the 24 volt is going to go to the uh, the farthest positive so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the 24 volt right to my uh, bus bar the common is the the bridge in between the two batteries so I'm going to connect it directly to this this negative side right here and the zero volt is the is the farthest negative so I'm going to connect it to the negative bus bar right here. And if I feel like there's any issues with it, uh, I will move them from the bus bars and I'll put them directly on the battery terminals. All right, now it says to wire it up, it says use at least 75 millimeter squared wire, which is 18 gauge, and you wire the negative, the positive, and the midpoint in this order. So I'm gonna wire the negative first, positive, and then midpoint. So my negative. Then positive. Okay, and now midpoint. All right, it looks like we're all wired up. All right, we have our positive going right here. We have our common, which is our midpoint. So it's going to our midpoint right here. And then we have our negative going to right here. There are no lights on and that is how it's supposed to be because these lights won't turn on until it gets up to 27.3 volts. And once it gets past 27.3 volts, this thing will turn on and it will start balancing the batteries. So I believe uh, that is it for this part of it. Uh, the next part, I will show you the next seven days of uh, seeing if our, uh, our midpoint deviation goes down. I'm really hoping that it goes down a lot after the first full charge and it absorbs for two hours. But I have a feeling it's not going to because of you know, the, the size of these batteries. I think it'll take a lot longer than one day. It'll probably take a lot longer than seven days. But I really hope after the seventh day 
we'll see a definite, a definite difference. Let's look for day one. All right, everyone, uh, it is now day one of our test. And as you can see, this is before we installed the, uh, ba the battery balancer. Um, as you can see, the, the deviation quickly rises up and it rises all the way up to past 3%. Um, and at some points it gets up to 3.2. And then at the very end, look at that, it, it gets all the way up to 3.5% deviation with a top voltage of 14.41 and a bottom voltage of 13.44. So that's, uh, that's, that's pretty big. So that's kind of what we're starting at. So let's look at today. Since we installed it last night, we'll look at uh, today's date in the same time frame. Okay, and now we're looking at today's date. And as you can see, it does again quickly rise up, but it only rises up to about 2.3, 2.4% with a top voltage of 14.22, uh, but a bottom voltage of 13.57. And our deviation is only at 2.3. And as you can see, it actually goes down. So it looks like the battery balancer, even after one day, is starting, starting to do its job. After the absorption, again, it goes it goes back down. But another thing I want to show you is today, after it goes down and we're in float mode, we still have a midpoint deviation of 0.2. But if you look at from a couple days ago, the, the, the deviation in float mode is 0.5. So Again, um, the battery balancer after one day looks like it's reducing the amount of deviation between the two batteries. We'll see what happens tomorrow and I'll keep you informed. All right, everybody, it's uh, now day two. All right, and as you can see, absorption, absorption started at 1.51 p.m. And um, let's see, right at one. At 151, it yeah the, the the deviation really shot. It shot all the way up to looks like 1.6, uh, and then from 1.6 it went down. It looks like it, it stepped down. It looked like every time every time the balancer kind of kicked on, it it, it moved that down. Uh, let's see here, let's scroll down a little bit because I wanted to see why I saw this dip right here and I thought that was kind of strange, but as you can see over here. Um, this big jump, it, it goes from, you know, using 64 watts, it goes all the way up to 167 watts, and it stays there for about 20 or 30 minutes. That is my uh, refrigerator kicking in. So, but <clears throat> you can see that up here, the, you know, it shows the refrigerator kick in, and then as soon as it, as soon as the, the refrigerator turns off, the voltage starts going up on both of them. So that kind of threw things for a loop. But, it only got back up to 0.7% deviation before it started going back down again. And by the time absorption was over and we went into float mode, we're looking at 0.4%. And it, you know, it got down. Let's, let's change this. Let's change this to another hour instead of four o'clock. Let's do five o'clock. Yeah. And it's uh, and now it, the, the the midpoint deviation is sticking around 0.1 percent. That's definitely better than yesterday. Yesterday I think we we're talking about two 2.4 to 2 percent, and this time it only got up to 1.6 percent, and it it dropped all the way down, uh, you know, practically to zero. We'll see what day three brings to our situation. Okay, everyone, now we're going to be looking at uh, days four and five since uh, day three was very cloudy and we did not get up to any kind of voltage. So here is day four. And as you can see, when uh, absorption started, the deviation again shot up, but it only shot up to 1%, which is pretty good. And then it quickly dropped all the way back down uh, to 0.3%. So it looks like this uh, 
this battery balancer is really doing its job. And then once absorption was over, it dropped all the way down to zero, and then it stayed uh, right around 0.1%. So now let's go ahead and look at day five. All right, and now here is day five, which was Sunday. And again, uh, you can see over here, it, uh, absorption started at 10.48 a.m. And right when absorption started, it shot up to 0.8%. Uh, so it's, it's every day, it's getting a little bit lower and a little bit lower. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then it quickly drops right back down to 0.3, 0.2% deviation. And by the time absorption ends, uh, you know, we're sitting at, again, 0.1% and zero, you know, it's right around point, you know, 0.1%. We'll see what happens tomorrow, and I'll let you know. All right, everyone, this is day six of the test. Uh, when, abs when absorption started, uh, it was about 0.5% deviation with a top voltage of 13.97 and a bottom voltage of 13.82. Uh, but as, as it went on, you can see that the voltages came right together uh, all the way to being about two millivolts uh, of difference. So as you can tell, these are uh, really getting close together at the end of absorption. And then let's look at the seventh day, which we're going to go ahead and skip ahead two days. We're going to skip ahead to the 14th because the 13th was a very cloudy day and we didn't get any kind of data. As you can see, absorption started at 12.50 p.m. and it lasted until 2.50 p.m. And at 12.50, there was zero deviation, but then they split apart like they usually do. Uh, and then they split all the way to 0.7% deviation. Uh, so the top voltage was 14 and the bottom voltage was 13.81. But look at this, as absorption is going through, these voltages actually come together to the point where they are exactly the same. So at 2.07 p.m., they are both at 13.9 volts with a you know, deviation of zero. And uh, you can see that the bottom voltage actually goes above the top voltage in this graph uh, by three, three millivolts. Uh, so that right there is exactly what we want to see. We want to see this battery balancer bring those two voltages together. This is confirmation right here that this battery balancer is doing exactly what it's designed for and it works perfectly with lithium ion phosphate batteries. So if you have any questions about my results, um, please leave them in the comments. Um, also, if you like this video, please uh, hit that thumbs up and give it a like. And um, you know, if you like this content, please subscribe. Um, I'll be making more videos as, as I can. And I hope this video helps somebody. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your night. And take care. Bye-bye.